Time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Reed, Johnny, at Floyd's of England. How are you, George? Do you by any chance remember Durango Laramie Dalhart? From that place out in Oklahoma with the crazy name of Bum Sprung? That's right. Now, Johnny... How uh, could I ever forget him? And more to the point, has he ever forgiven you? Forgiven me? After all, you were the one who accused him of passing counterfeit money. Well, I and know. All he did was wash and starch and iron a few hundred-dollar bills to make him look nice and new and crisp. Well, I'm quite frank to admit I was entirely wrong about him that time. Hey, tell me, does he still pay his premiums in brand-new money and in person? Yes, and that's what has me worried. How do you mean? Well, he wrote me some time ago and said he'd be here on the 10th of last month to pay his regular $4,500 premium. The 10th of last? Well, that's nearly six weeks ago. Exactly. And he hasn't appeared. Well, did you write or wire him to see what's holding him up? I got no answer. Johnny, I think something's happened to him. After all, with the way he flashes money around, it's a wonder if somebody hasn't knocked him off long before this. George, if anything's happened to old Durango Laramie Dalhart. Yeah, I, uh, I thought you'd feel that way about it. Yeah. I'll let you know what I find out when I get to, if you'll pardon the expression, bum spunk. Bob Bailey, in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Floyd's of England, American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is the account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Durango Laramie matter. George Reed has quite a pension for handing me really offbeat cases. But for once, this looked like serious business. Expense account item 1, 9420, transportation. I arrived in Enid, Oklahoma, shortly after 4 a.m. Item 2, a buck 85 for breakfast. Item 3, $50 deposit on a rental car. I headed due north on Highway 81 across some of the flattest plains country I've ever seen that I hadn't expected to see again so soon. About 26 or 7 miles further on, after crossing what remains of the Salt Fork of the Arkansas, I spotted the familiar weather-beaten sign indicating that Bum Spung was somewhere up a rough dirt road to the left. Bum Spung, named by the Indians. It means bad water. And finally there it was, the same old broken wooden fence surrounding a couple of acres of poor sandy ground. The same ramshackle house, the broken down barn, propped up in spots with timbers. And in the yard were the same two sad looking cows I'd seen on my previous visit. The swayback horse and the friendly mangy toothless hound, some decrepit looking chickens. Bum Spunk, so-called ranch of Durango Laramie Delhart, who'd made it in oil and who chose to settle down in this lonely desolate spot. And standing there looking at it, it was hard to believe that the inside of the huge unpainted house was clean, modern, well-furnished, thanks to his niece, Carol, who occasionally came up to see the old man. As I swung aside the sagging wire gate, I wondered if she was here now. I wondered if anyone was here, but not for long. Durango! Durango, it's Johnny Dollar. Stay outside that fence, you men and young varmint. It's here now. It's private property. Wait a minute. You're not Durango. I came here to see Durango Laramie Delhart. Oh, you did, eh? Well, Durango ain't here. Now, look, you. Oh, you shut up that gate and drive away from here. You see this here now, 30-30? Drive away after you've blown a hole in one of my tires? I did, eh? Well, I guess that one's very sociable now, was it? Hey, look, lower that gun for a minute, will you? Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. You try anything funny and I'll let you have it. Only, I guess it is up to me to fix that uh, tire for you, ain't it? Huh? After all, as long as I done it, uh, let me take a look and make sure you just ain't up to some trick here. See what I am. Hey! Just give me that gun now. Oh, no, you don't. Oh. No, you don't. <laughs> Okay. Now, who are you, and what are you doing here, and where's Durango? My hopper, Sonny. You sure pack a punch. Start talking, mister. Who are you? Who am I? Side Widener Wilson. That's who I am. Who'd you think? And who are you? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Why, old Durango sent me a telegram. That's why. Oh, yeah? Sure. Here. Here, now. 
Read it for yourself. To Mr. Sidewinder Wilson, Gunsight Oil Field, somewhere is near the Petterdale River, Texas. Yeah, that's where the field is, and that's where I got this telegram. Get yourself up here to bum spawn. That's what he and says. Take care of my ranch for a while and get here fast, signed Durango. Yeah. Uh, are you satisfied? Just who are you, Sidewinder? Who am I? Durango's oldest, bestest friend is all. Hold him since we rigged together in the oil fields before he made his gold strike up in Colorado, that's who. So when he tells me to come up here and take care of things, I come, that's all. What do you expect? But now look here, uh, Johnny, is this what you say your name is? Uh, Johnny Dollar. Yeah, well, there's something I don't like about Durango's going away this time. What do you mean? What I mean? Well, I mean the way he must have left in a powerful hurry, that's why. You know Durango pretty good? Pretty good. Well, can you see him leaving this nice house of his'n with all the doors and windows unlocked? He wasn't here when you arrived? No, sir. He'd already went away. And, and, and can you see him leaving no food around for the cattle and, and Methuselah and Primrose? Methuselah and Primrose? What is this? The like? horse and this nice old dog here. And what about the tractor? Just sitting out there in the field, plows down halfway up a furrow. What are you getting at, Sidewinder? What am I getting at? I'm a saying he must have left in an awful hurry, that's all. And if you ask me, there's something funny about it, and I don't mean funny, ha ha. Yeah, I think you got something there. You see, he was due in Hartford, Connecticut over six weeks ago. Pay up on his insurance, huh? That's right. All loaded down with brand new money, I bet. Probably. Yeah, I've told that crazy old coyote a thousand times that he oughtn't to go traipsing all over the country with all that money in his kick. <laughs> Johnny, if he ain't showed up the way he was supposed, it just means one solitary single thing. Like what, Sidewinder? Like what? Well, like... Like... Somebody's waylaid and bushwhacked him for his money, that's what. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid so. But, Sidewinder, I sure hope you're wrong. Okay, I sure hope I'm wrong. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Windshield wipers? Yeah, I sure did, Reba. How's that? Oh, you fixed them. Good for you, Donald. Thank you, my dear. Well, that's that. Now, if it rains, we're prepared for it, huh? <laughs> I feel better now. Oh, me too. A driver has to see the danger if he expects to avoid it. That's right. And also keep the back and side windows clear in rain and snowy weather. That's right. Oh, how about the horn? It... The horn? The horn doesn't work, Sergeant. Aren't you going to fix it? It, no, I don't think so. Uh, frankly, Reba, I hate horns. Whenever there's a traffic jam, the first thing some guys do is blow their horn. Which does absolutely no good. Of course not. All it does is jar everyone's nerves. No, I I don't think I'll fix the horn. Oh, but now wait a minute, Don. Mm -hmm. Look, supposing we're driving along and, and suddenly we see a youngster on his bicycle headed right out into the street. Sounding that horn will warn him and possibly avoid a tragic accident. Yes, that's true, but... Or supposing we're driving on the highway, and just as we're about to pass a car, that car decides to pull out into our lane and pass the car ahead of him. He obviously doesn't see us, and he won't hear us shout. But one little beep on that horn, and he'll automatically scoot back and avoid a collision. Reba, you've convinced me. Even though it can be a nuisance, the automobile horn is a necessity. Then you'll repair it? Immediately. Oh, that's my Donald. That's my doll. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Durango Laramie Matter. Durango Laramie Delhart, cradle character from Bum Spung, Oklahoma, gone, disappeared. His pal, Sidewinder Wilson, a bit of a character himself, had no idea what might have happened to him, but feared the worst. And I had to agree that his fears were justified. But tell me this, Sidewinder, have you heard anything from Durango's niece, Carol? Uh, you mean that pretty little gal fixed up this place for him so nice, kind of looks after him? That's the one. 
Well, uh, say, don't she live down to Enid? Enid, yes. Runs a gas station. That's right. Sign of the flying red horse. Come on, help me fix this tire. We'll drive back to Enid. Well, I'll help you fix the tire, but I'm staying right here. Oh, why? Why? Because Durango's trusting me to take care of the place. And if he does turn up, God willing, I'll be here to have him get in touch with you. Okay, now let's get this tire fixed. No, wait. Look. Huh? See that fancy convertible coming up the road? I not only saw the convertible, but more important, who was in it, who pulled up alongside the fence and stepped out. She was 23 or 4, a tall, slim brunette wearing a neatly tailored skirt, a tight-fitting silk blouse. Neat, trim. She looked like she'd just stepped out of Charles of the Ritz. Well, how be so blessed, Johnny. Carol. <gasps> Carol, how are you? You couldn't resist my fatal charms. I couldn't stay away. With just with that. Oh. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? You don't like that. Oh, no, come here, girl. Oh, listen, now, Johnny, I... J- j- <laughs> yeah? Carol? Oh, Johnny. Gee, I... Here, I've missed you. <laughs> oh, you shut up, sidewinders. Johnny. Mm-hmm. My coming by Gory is to wrangle good shooting. <laughs> Durango. Oh, yeah. Carol, Carol, listen to me. You got to propose, John? Where's Durango? Have you heard anything from him since he left here six weeks ago? He went to Hartford. But he hasn't arrived there. Oh, now don't you start worrying none about old Uncle Durango or anything. Or... You sure, John? I'm sure. That crazy old goop setting out across the country with over $50,000 in money and his pants. He ought to know better than... Johnny, do you think something's happened to him? Yes, me. I think somebody's killed him for that money. Oh, no. You haven't heard from him since he left? Only a postcard from Chicago where he stayed overnight at some fancy hotel. And, Johnny, that wasn't like him. What do you mean? Oh, it was before he went straight to Hartford. That real estate man was from Chicago, Carol. What real estate man? Oh, he used to come out here looking for people with oil money. Tried to get Durango to invest in real estate, Florida, New England. Well, what did his postcard say? Nothing, really. Just that he was staying overnight. And before he'd come back, he was going to look at Ong's hat. Who is Ong? Oh, he was always writing silly stuff like that. I don't know. Ong. Oh, Johnny, what do we do? Where's the nearest phone? Back in Enid. Then come on, that's where we're going. In Enid, I put in a long-distance call to Phil Avery, an old friend at International Press Service, in the hope that if Durango's body had been picked up anywhere in the country, the news files would have some note of it. Durango, Laramie, Dal, Art, that's a man's name? Yeah, Phil, does it mean anything to you? I'll say this, Johnny. If a name like that had ever come in over the wires, I'd certainly have remembered it. But it hasn't. Not to my knowledge. Incidentally, what's this all about? Oh, he left here loaded with cash. Now he's disappeared. No clues? Only that he's planned to see some guy named Ong. Ong? For some crazy reason, he's interested in Ong's hat. Well, that's about as silly as... Ong's hat, did you say? <laughs> oh, no. You mean that rings a bell? <laughs> Are you kidding? Of course it does. Oh, no. Phil. Oh, Phil. Uh, Phil, listen, will you? This may be a matter of life or death. Uh, 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 Phil. Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Reba! Reba! What is it, Donald? Confound it, Reba. I can't find the fountain pen. I've looked all through this desk. Here it is, dear. Mm, here it is. You must have used it as a marker when you were reading this book. Let's see, this great literary classic, Six Gun Showdown at Powder River Gulch. All right, never mind about my reading habits. Just look at the coverage we're going to get with this new auto accident policy. Hmm, let's see. We have collision. Mm -hmm, $50 deductible. Mm -hmm. Fire, theft, public liability, property damage, medical benefits. In other words, we have complete coverage. That's right. Of course, it's going to cost us money. 
I'm sending the company a check right now. Gee, it's too bad we don't live in Rhode Island. Rhode Island? Why? Well, because then our rates would be lower. Rhode Island has less accidents per capita than any other state. Oh. Well, which state has the highest? Let me see. Uh, oh, here, here it is, Nevada. No, by golly, Nevada's second highest. Alaska has the most. Really? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just too bad we can't eliminate traffic accidents completely. Not only would it save life and limb, but it'd be a lot less strain on the pocketbook. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. These automobile accident policies get more expensive every year just because there's so many costly accidents. Well, I'm glad we've got some good insurance coverage, Donald, but just remember one thing. Oh, what's that, honey? Well, some auto accidents ruin a fender and some ruin a family. Yeah, that's true, very true. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want any of your old insurance money. I want you here at home, safe and sound. You'll always drive carefully, won't you? Mm, yes, I will, dear. Oh, that's my Donald. That's my doll. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Durango Laramie Matter. <laughs> Stop that howling and make some sense. This could be a matter of life or death. Ong? <laughs> Ong, um, um, did you say? That's right. You know who he is. Ong, <laughs> no, no. Do you know him? Oh, no. No. I, I don't know any Ong, but I know what it is. Huh? Ong, Sam, New Jersey. What? Sure. <laughs> down down in the pine and cranberry bog country. <laughs> down near Mount Holly, south of Trenton. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Johnny. Okay, Phil. Two legs with a big Okay, boat. Phil, thanks. Johnny, I found the car to that real estate promoters in Chicago. Good. We'll take the first flight we can get out of Tulsa. We... Come on, Carol, we're on our way. <laughs> Expense account item four, 164.80, plane fare and incidentals. In Chicago, we stopped over long enough to pay a brief, unpleasant visit with one J. Harry Cramlin, real estate promoter at his office just off the loop. So what if I did sell this Dale Hard character some land over in New Jersey? What's it to you? You trying to cut in on a good thing? How much did you sell him, Mr. Cramlin? Oh, a little over $35,000 worth. But now if you... What was it? A lot of worthless swamp land... He didn't seem to think so after the glowing report I gave him. But why did he buy it? Because the old fool thinks there's oil on it. Ramlin, if you've taken Durango... Now, ain't that a name? Durango Laramie Dalhart. If he's been chipped in this deal, would you better duck the next time you see me coming? You threatening me about a cash, perfectly legal deal? Oh, I'm sure it was legal. But oil in South Jersey... Cramlin, my warning still goes. The next leg of our flight took us to Philadelphia. There I rented another car. That's 50 bucks deposit, item 5. We drove across the Delaware River and picked up Route 537 to Mount Holly. There we stopped for a sandwich and a Coke. That's item 6. And there a passing glance at a newspaper headline stopped me in my tracks. Something about a big oil development at... Yeah, you guessed it. At Ong's Hat. We burned up Highway 530 to Pemberton, then hit a sandy back road that led deep into the pine and scrub oak. Finally, suddenly, we came to a clearing. And there, well, there must have been a hundred cars, expensive ones, some of them chauffeured limousines, and people milling about, haranguing each other, shouting each other down. And right in the middle of the crowd, a tall, angular man in blue jeans and a ten-gallon hat, Durango. Johnny, there he is! And then I saw something else on the edge of the clearing. Two brand new towering oil derricks. Come on, Johnny, let's get him away from that mob. Not only was he cheated by that shyster real estate operator into thinking he was buying oil land, but he's he's thrown more money away building those derricks. Oh, Johnny. Oh, that mob is probably trying to sell him enough rigging and pumps and equipment to fleece him royally. Ten to one, somebody in that crowd's offered him the Brooklyn Bridge to boot. Then we gotta stop him. If only I'd run the shoot now. Hey, Durango Cena. Oh, Durango, you old skunk, you're all okay. Hey, sure I am. Come on in this chair. 
Jack here so we can get away from this blast. Come on, come on. You look here, Johnny. What are you doing with my little Carol, huh? I'll tell you, Durango. He sneak out to Enid behind my back and hitch up with her. All right, get on in there now where he has some peace. Ah, ah. Yeah, sit down where you can. All right, now, you young rascals. Is that what you done? Gone and got married? Well, of course not, you old goot. Oh, well, doggone it. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, goot. Well, don't you give me that, gal. I know how you was talking ever since Johnny come out to bum spung last year. Django, you What'd shut you up. Say? I, uh... I'm afraid this trip is on business, Durango. Business? With a pretty gal like Carol here? You... And, uh, how'd you two get here, anyway? Johnny brought me on the plane, but what difference did Oh, he did, eh? Transported you across state line, huh? A whole lot of them. And there ain't no law about that. Why, Jake, you two are gonna have to get married. Durango! And I'm just the one to see that you do. Durango! I don't carry this old six gun for nothing. Durango, will you shut up and let Johnny tell you why he's been looking all over for you? What do you mean, looking, you, you, you? Huh? Durango, you've been had. Me? By the crook who told you this was oil land. Ah, Johnny, I know it weren't the minute I seen it. But you put up Derek's, and they must have caught right, you. Right, sure, it. sure, they caught me plenty. It just, uh... <clears throat> And a funny thing happened. Oh, now, wait yeah, a minute. Sir, the minute the folks got wind of me, a millionaire oil man from Texas and Oklahoma putting up the dairy. Oh, Johnny, no. on my word of honor, I've told every one of them people I've told <laughs> them that there ain't no oil here. <laughs> you mean you yes, have sir, I've told them till I was blue in the face. Durango. <laughs> but uh, would that stop me? That wouldn't stop them from wanting to buy this land away from me? No, sir. And you've been selling it? Why, sure. I told them it was no good, but I... I just couldn't stop them, and so far I, I've uh, come out a mite over $65,000 to the good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Durango! Yeah. Oh, really? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, I say. Uh, yeah? Johnny Dollar, are you here to buy a piece of my land or to marry my little Carol here? Oh, no, 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 Durango! Durango! Me, it better be both. Now, how about it? Expense account item seven, a thousand dollars even. The company now owns a small hunk of land in Ong's Hat, New Jersey. As for Carol, that ever loving doll, well, someday, maybe someday. Expense account total, including incidentals and transportation back to Hartford, fourteen hundred sixteen dollars even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, G. Stanley Jones, Junius Matthews, Alan Reed, Frank Nelson, and John McIntyre. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Mm -hmm.